Hi, my name is Keith Cooper from North Light Images and uh, I've been lucky enough to have the Canon R5 for a week or so to experiment with. So this is a short overview of what I thought about it. There's a, an article I'm writing which will go into a lot more of the technical issues I found, but essentially I'm a user of a Canon 5DS. This is my day-to-day -day camera, 50 megapixels, works really well. Here's the R5, 45 megapixels. Now right up front, five megapixels makes no real difference. So that's not really what I'm looking at. I'm an architectural and industrial photographer. That means things like autofocus speed, shots per second, and a really high res video are not of great interest to me. I'm strictly looking at this as a user of the 5DS, comparing it with using the Canon R5. Now I've used the 5DS for nearly five years and I know it pretty well. So I have my ways of using it and I have my ways of processing the images. I would say that anyone who professes to do a camera review with a camera that they've only had for a week is a fraud. Um, you cannot, even if you are an experienced camera reviewer, come out with a meaningful review of a camera this complex in a week. Um, no, that's not a hint for Canon to lend it to me for longer, but I do like it, so it's a, it's a nice camera. Now, this is about my impressions, and remember always to think of the kind of work I do. I'm not interested in autofocus speed or any of the performance issues which people will, other people will look at with this camera. I'm looking at it as a high quality stills camera. So, how's it like to use? First up, ergonomics, how it feels to pick up. It's very similar to using the 5DS. Um, it's obvious Canon based their design of the R5 heavily on the 5 Series cameras. Why not? The 5 Series cam cameras are popular and sell well. So this is the mirrorless replacement for this in some ways. Now I would argue that the mirrorless replacement for this has more megapixels, but that's another matter which we probably won't get to address until next year. But size-wise, not very different. This is thinner. Does that make a difference in day-to-day -day use? No. I can hold it this comfortably just as well. It's not a problem. So there's no real difference there. The controls, although there's no dial, as you have here on the 5 Series, uh, they're intuitive. If you've used Canon cameras for any length of time, you'll have no difficulty in switching between the two. Now, there is an advanced manual for this, which is worth a read. It's uh, oh, at least 700 pages. Uh, they're not very big pages, but uh, it's worth having a look for because this does so much that you will need to decide which things to customize. The other thing is, the reason I say you can't test things in a week is because what I may think is a good option after a few days of using the camera might be an option that I think, mm, why did I bother after a week or two of using the camera? This goes for custom functions and all the other things. If you're used to using custom setups in your normal camera, you'll have no difficulty with the concepts of using the same sorts of things in the 5 Series. Obviously one big difference is that the 5DS has no flippy out screen and an optical viewfinder. Now it's a very good optical viewfinder and I liked it a lot. I always have done. I've had a 1DS and a 1DS Mark III before this and I like Canon viewfinders. They're nice and bright and easy to use. Now that's quite a problem for some people switching over from optical viewfinder to electronic viewfinder in that they're not quite sure how the image they see relates to what they're capturing. Now I'd say this is something that you get used to quite quickly. 
I've not got it. I've not got any concerns over speed or lag or anything like that. I don't shoot sports. I, I'm an architectural industrial photographer. Uh, not a lot moves in a lot of my photos, so that's that's not a difficulty there. In many ways, I'm not really pushing the camera in many of its features here. I like the little screen on the top here. Um, it's simple. It's not as big as you may be used to but it has all the key information and there's a lot more in the viewfinder if you want it. The button layout is Canon-like. You will have to get used to things, but, yeah, but that's the same with any camera. What I can say is that um, in 2019, I got an EOS RP. It's actually what I'm filming this on at the moment. And in using the RP as a camera to test and do various things, I got used to the way mirrorless cameras or Canon's implementation of them work. And that lessened the shock of going from this to this. Now, if you were going directly from this and a history of DSLRs to this camera, you might well have a bit of a shock. Um, there are things that happen that you think, well, it shouldn't be quite like that. But after a while you get used to it and you may even appreciate some of these features. Now I come later to some of the features of the R5 that I don't greatly appreciate and there are a few, but in general I would have no problem in going from using this at 50 megapixels to this. Now I've also got some examples of images. Now these are much easier to show in the written article than they are in this video. Um, certainly details of resolution and things like that. But the 45 megapixels from this is broadly similar to the 5DS. Yes there's a fraction higher resolution but you don't actually really notice it. Where the files from the R5 do win out is that you can get a bit more detail out of them. There's a little bit less noise. But if you're expecting a massive difference, you will be disappointed. Um, because for this to be much, much better than this, this would have to be not very good. And I actually like this camera. It produces very good results. I've used it for a few years. Love using the, the pictures I get from it. The pictures here are a bit better if you compare them directly. But I can say during the week that I've been using this, there's not a picture I've taken with this where I thought, oh, that's definitely a much better picture than I would have got with this. Um, there just isn't the difference. The difference has come elsewhere, as I said, from ergonomics and also the lenses. Now the R5 uses Canon's RF mount. This is a completely new mount. It is based loosely on the EF mount to the extent that EF lenses are easily compatible with RF mount cameras. It has a shorter flange distance, which is the distance between the end of the lens and where the sensor is. In this camera, it's about this much. And in this camera, it's about this much. That leads to a more compact camera. Although, as you can see, not necessarily that much more compact. Now the RF lenses, and I had a few to try. Uh, this is the 1535, it's the 2470 and the 7200. Without doubt, all the RF lenses are better in general performance than their EF counterparts. Um, if you have newish versions of the 2470, um, sort of the 2470 or the 7200. There's no rush out to get them, but bear in mind that you will get a few differences. Now, the RF lenses have the normal focal length adjustment. They have an electronic focus control and they have another control ring. Now this is something that does take a bit of getting used to and it's potentially very useful. Um, you can have it to change exposure, you can, you can customise it to almost anything you like that needs a continuous control. Um, you can have it set to change ISO if you like or you could even have it change the aperture and just make it easier to use than using your thumb on one of the wheels at the back. Um, controls at the back here are nice and easy to use, no trouble there, but 
holding a lens, there are clear advantages to using the, holding the lens sometimes. Now, as I said, quality-wise, they're all, they've all got the RF lenses, have an edge on the old EF lenses. Um, Build-wise, they all seem pretty solid, but hey, I've only used them for a week, and these are new lenses from Canon, so I don't really know. I do only have one minor complaint, and that's about this, the uh, 70 to 200. Take the lens cap off. Sorry, Canon, I prefer the non-extending design. I don't like the dust pump design here. I can almost feel dusty air being drawn in and expelled and washed through the camera with this. Um, I may be wrong. Um, I did say this is just my impressions. Um, it is a nice lens though, it's a nice compact lens and it performs far better than my old 70 to 200. Well now when I say far better, these things are always relative. I've taken lots of great photos with the 70 to 200. Would those photos have been better with this one? Well, yes and no. For very fine detail, maybe yes. One area where they would make a difference is the built-in image stabilisation in here, working with this image stabilisation in the lens. Um, it just works together very well. Almost all my testing has been shots taken handheld at relatively slow shutter speeds. Um, there's been no problem. Um, I expect some camera shake when I'm shooting something like this uh, handheld. If I'm on a job, I usually use a tripod. But for a lot of stuff, I much prefer shooting handheld. And if you do, this is a big advantage. The sensor-based stabilization in this gives you stabilization to absolutely any lens you might put on. And it works well with the stabilization in lenses that have it, such as these RF lenses here. One of my reasons for wanting to have a look at the R5 was to see how well it worked with lenses like this. This is the TSE 17 tilt shift lens. We have a TSE 50, 50 mm tilt shift lens, and TSE 24 tilt shift lens. Without exception, they worked perfectly. Um, I've written another article and there is a short video on using these lenses with this. And in particular, I was using them with this, which is the polarizing filter adapter. So EF lens goes here, RF mount to camera here, and there is a filter inside it. That's a polarizer. It means you can use a polarizer on things like the 17mm here without needing some vast great contraption stuck on the front of it, uh, which is unwieldy and um, I just never liked them. But work to treat. Adapters like this are useful, although I'm told they're in very short supply at the moment. Expect in coming months for quite a few third parties to start providing uh, fil drop in filters and versions of this adapter. The power of these adapters is a very useful feature for the RF mount. One minor gripe I had was uh, concerning the fitting of lens caps at the camera end on the RF mount. Whereas on EF lenses you just go and it fits like that. With RF lenses it's not quite so simple. The mount is not quite so forgiving in terms of getting it lined up properly and that one was lined up there we go that's the problem it's taken me a few seconds and i've had to look at attaching it um, there we go it is on i've had to fumble a bit there and i noticed that when i was out in the field trying sopping lenses around trying to keep dust out of things dust now there's another problem um, dust is almost never a problem with something like the 5DS here. Uh, the mirror's in place in front, the shutter's closed all the while, mirror goes up, shutter opens. Not a lot of dust gets in. There's also cleaning of the sensor. There's cleaning of the sensor here. You can set this so that when the camera's off, the shutter is in front, as you'd expect normally on a, on a traditional camera here. 
but I have found that mirrorless cameras seem to have stepped back about five years in terms of dust prevention. Now, if you shoot at fairly wide apertures, you may not even notice it. But once you start stopping down, as you do sometimes need to do with tilt shift lenses, you suddenly start noticing dust spots in your pictures. Um, I thought, what's this? Something I've not really been bothered by for 10 years. So it's an area that I'd say mirrorless has still some catching up to do with this. Um, yeah, you may not be bothered by it. It was just an annoyance for me. Following on from the EF to RF adapters, I should mention this adapter here is a photodiox tilt shift lens adapter. Uh, the lens is a Mamaya 35mm medium format lens. And I can use with shift. and tilt, I can easily use all my old medium format lenses on the R5. Now I've written some, several articles about adapted lenses, tilt shift and the like. So if you've got some old lenses, think about using them on this kit. Um, it's actually rather nifty. So, did I like the R5? Yes, loved it. It's a great camera to use. What don't I like so much? Well, a few things. The ability to control when this screen comes on is limited in what I find an annoying manner. I'd like to be able to use the viewfinder for everything except display images and camera status information settings on the back. In other words, I'd like a mode of being able to use the display exactly as I use the display here. I think, well, surely you can get used to some other mode. The electronics display, yeah, there are lots of ways of configuring it, but essentially it wants to use this as a viewfinder and I sometimes don't want to use this as a viewfinder. I want the screen available but I don't. I want to use the viewfinder as a viewfinder, the screen as a screen, except when I don't. Now on the 5DS I just put on live view. I'd like something the equivalent of only using this for displaying what's coming in the lens when I want it to. So in other words most of the time it's blank. Now the sensor here detects when you get close to it and will switch between the two quite easily. Not a problem. It's just a minor issue. I'll explain this better in the written up article. It's a, it's a minor gripe, but um, it means that in outdoor use, most of the time I actually use the camera with the rear screen folded back because I don't want the rear screen, screen coming on, and particularly at night. Um, I don't want the back of the camera lighting up every so often just because it feels like it. I want to keep it dark, except when I don't. And that's a level of control I would just like to see. It's a quibble, but I'd say this is a personal gripe. Now, a more general gripe comes relating to this thing. The battery. Now, these are higher capacity batteries than I get in the... 5DS, so yeah, that's great. However, the R5 eats up batteries like they're gone out of fashion. It's not as bad as some uh, cameras have been previously, but for the first time, I would want to take two fully charged spare batteries with me if I was going on a job. I always take a spare battery with this. I rarely ever need to use them, and I'll take maybe a car charger or something like that. That's fine. But with this, I'm almost certainly going to use up a battery fairly quickly. Now, the nice thing is there's a USB-C port on the side here and I can connect that up to a power pack and I can charge it off this power pack. And the power pack I can recharge in the car or do various things like that. But 
I have to be far more wary of power management with the R5 than I ever did with the 5DS or the 1DS or the 1DS Mark III. Um, hopefully, as things move on, battery life will improve. It's not bad, it's just something that you have to think about. So hopefully they will improve a bit over time. So is that really my only complaint about it, the battery life? Um, battery life and a minor niggle over switching between this, yeah, that's about it really. Um, have a look at the written article, uh, but also have a look at my EOS RP review because the RP review was written from the point of view of someone going from this to a mirrorless camera. So covers a lot more of the sort of handling shock that I got in moving from an optical viewfinder camera like this to a mirrorless. In some ways it helped me get ready for the move from this to this, or I should say hopefully the move from this to a version of this with lots more megapixels because that's what I do. I'm an architectural photographer. Anyway, please do ask me any questions, um, either email, comments on YouTube or comments on the website. I'm happy to answer things. I've got lots more articles written about various aspects, so all about tilt shift adapters, uh, even things like why you'll need a new card reader. But all in all, Thank you, Canon. Um, much appreciate it. Shame it's got to go back. Well, actually, yes, you can have the lenses back as long as you let me keep just this little bit here. Thank you.